will be bringing you the action this evening. We're looking for a good ball game this evening as the Blue Jays welcome Southwestern College into town. Southwestern nationally ranked out of the KCAC and they are ranked number nine in the new polls that I believe just came out today. So let's take a look at our comparison. They come into tonight's contest. Southwestern does with a record of 10 and two. Tabor at five and seven. 15 and two overall for Southwestern, eight and 10 for the Blue Jays. Last time out, Southwestern picked up a big win at home versus Evangel. Evangel, a new team in the conference, been kind of up and down this year. Uh, they won by a score of 86 to 78 down in Winfield. And the Blue Jays, after taking four of five and kind of on a roll, couldn't quite get it going up in Leavenworth and dropped a road win there to St. Mary's, 77 59. As you see, head coaches for the Builders, Matt O'Brien, and for the Blue Jays, Matt Warren. We've got a couple other things while that graphic is still up. We'll mention <clears throat> Blue Jays are led in scoring by Thatcher McClure with 15.6 a game, shooting 49% from the floor and 34% from the three-point line. Three-point leader for, Jack, for the Blue Jays, Jack Voth at 38.2%. Rebounds, Kenyon Holcomb and Thatcher McClure, both seven, pulling down 7.1 boards a game. Caleb Crane leaves us an assist with 2.3 a game and steals 1.2. Caleb and Jack Proctor, Jake Proctor, assist and turnover ratio lead the Blue Jays at 1.1. Both leading the way on minutes played at 33.3 points a game. Scoring for the Builders will be Kevin Clark at 27.2 a game. That's going to be a matchup really to watch tonight as Caleb Crane, the Blue Jays' top defender at the guard position, he will be saddled with a task to guard Clark. And we'll see how that kind of plays all, all along as the game moves along. Talked to Caleb a little bit a while ago, and he's ready for the, the task. And as he said, if he gets his 27 a game, he's going to, he's going to earn every one of them. But... Watch for Caleb to really do a good job. He's a great defender, but let's also keep an eye on how that may wear him down a little bit, handling the ball. Maybe Coach uh, Warren, maybe throwing a little two-point two guard combo out there once in a while. I'm not for sure. Um, have not talked to him about that, but that's a guess as an option definitely could do. We'll go ahead and set the starters for you here, and then we'll turn it over down later to the PA announcement for the Builders. Number zero, Andrew O'Brien, a 6'7 senior from Halstead, Kansas. Number three, Wyatt Bell, six foot guard from sophomore from Keller, Texas. Transfer from Delta State University. Number 11, Jarvis Jennings. He's a 6'2 senior forward out of Columbia, Missouri. Transfer from John Wood, Wood Community College. That is Kevin Clark. It is spelled with a C, but it's Kevin Clark. Number 13, 5'11", senior out of Arc City from Cali College. And obviously, he's their, their leading scorer, and he'll shoot it anywhere, uh, over half court anyway. And so look for him to get the ball up quite a bit tonight. And Zach, excuse me, Hildego, 6'7", sophomore out of Hooker, Oklahoma. Uh, we'll get the start as well. Another guy to keep an eye on is number 25, Mason Thiessen from Inman, Kansas, the Emporia State transfer for the Blue Jays. Uh, already mentioned number zero, Caleb Crane, is 6'1 junior out of Simsboro, Louisiana, junior. A point guard for the Blue Jays. I uh, found out today, talking to him a little bit. Mom is a teacher, and I was getting him a, 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 not a hard time, just congratulating him on a great job in the classroom uh, that I, I found out today, report how well he was doing in the class and how well he did on tests, and he said he, he better do that or Mom and Grandma will let him have it. So... Caleb gets the start at point guard again. Jack Voth, number two, 6'6", six, six, freshman out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Number four, Jake Proctor, 3A player of the year in the state of Kansas last year, 6'3", freshman guard out of Heston. Number 10, Thatcher McClure, 6'7", sophomore out of McKinney, Texas. And number 15, Kenyon Holcomb, a 6'8", junior forward out of Tumble, Texas via Cameron University. Take a look at the KCAC standings. The top eight get into the tournament. <clears throat> Oakwood leading the way right now, followed closely by Southwestern and Kansas Wesleyan. McPherson, who the Blue Jays did pick up a good win in that four out of five game streak over here at home in overtime. And then Bethel Evangel are both six and six 
Then you got York at five and six. Ottawa, Sterling, Tabor all at five and seven. So really York, if they if they would lose, you got a whole slug of them right there. St. Mary, as we mentioned, uh, they got a, a guy back, I believe, the other day, plus uh, ran into a hot shooting team up there. So they got the win over the Blue Jays. Francis four and eight, Avila and Bethany round out the KCAC at two and 10. Take a look at our production crew. We thank you, thanks all these guys for bringing us all the shots on our wide cam, Raul Moreno and the Hero Cam Valdisa Andoff. Also our production crew up in the booth, our switcher is Ander and Valencia, and our replay is Inyaki. So that's our crew that brings you everything that you see down here. Um, I'd also like to mention uh, the people working for us along Press Row down there is we'll have Mr. Nate Howard will be on the PA, Ollie Cannon on the time, Sasha Wassinger and Daryl Kamol on the panel. We'll also have Kat will be doing the shot clock, and then the book will be Del Shuey, and then Rory Cameron will be spotting for SID and statistician David Loomis. On the floor tonight is our men's track team. So we got a couple of our tracksters down there. I can't quite see both of them. I see Vance Shuey over there. And the team's in the way of the other guy down there. I'm not sure who that is. I can't see him on the left. So officials for tonight's contest, Mr. Derrick Henry will be heading the crew tonight. Stuart Shakey and Quincy Smith. So we're going to go ahead and take a break and hit a few announcements, a few ads from our sponsors that we greatly appreciate. We'll be back here in just a minute. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. And we Welcome back to Tabor College and the campus here in Hillsboro. And also like to mention Brianne McGinnis. She is our one of our SID graduates assistants as well, and she'll be handling the replay in the gymnasium for the officials. So at this time we're gonna have our prayer and opening anthem. So we'll be back in just a minute.
special thank you to Dr. Chris Teichler and the Tabor College Athletic Pet Band for their national anthem and their support of our teams. So if you didn't know, we have a new School of Fight song this year, uh, and Dr. Teichler has written that, and it's just outstanding. So we'll go ahead and check out the starters here that I covered earlier, but here they go for Southwestern and then Tabor. Your phone down. Pay attention. Back with you as PA announcer, graduate assistant, sports information director Nate Howard does a super job on the, the mic down there and has introduced both teams. So Coach Warren in his second season leading the Blue Jays, assisted by Adam Geiger, Ethan Geiger, and Tristan Smith. So Hildago and Holcomb will tip it up, and Holcomb gets the tip back to Caleb Crane, who's got to save it over to Voth. So Blue Jays get the first crack at it here this evening as the ball goes to McClure. Voth around the perimeter, and he's going to take it in right off the backboard. That's going to be no, that should have possibly been goaltending as they did hit the backboard when the ball was still up there, but no whistle. Bucket up and good by Jennings. So Southwestern strikes first, up 2-0. Crane brings it back down on, the, on the, throws it over to McClure. Ball's tip, both controls it. Holcomb now swings over the far side to both and Crane. McClure up top, calling for a travel. So Tabor off to a shaky start here on their first two possessions. Actually got a good shot first time. Time turned it over, so Tabor's got to play a near perfect game this evening here. Southwestern, obviously, very good team, ranked ninth in the country. Tabor has proven they can play with just about anybody. We see both cutting off Bell. O'Brien now has it up top. A three pointer on the way, no good. Cleared by McClure, Crane brings it up, surveys the floor, gets it over to Voth. Jack with a deep three, decides not to take it. Nice drive by Voth, takes it right to the chest of Hildago and knocks the game up at two apiece. You see Crane out, really guarding Clark. Now Proctor had to put him up on the switch. Nice job by the freshman to make him shoot up over him. Clark stands at. 5'11", Proctor at 6'3", so a little bit of an advantage there. 
Jake does a nice job. Turn around jumper by McClure, up and good. Blue Jays up 4-2 here in the early going. Bell has it up top, gets it over to O'Brien on the far wing. Good job by Holcomb going straight up and then getting a piece of that. That's going to Bell's first. First personal on Bell, first team foul on the Builders. Holcomb now out top. The doggo guarding him knows that Holcomb can make that three-pointer now the near side to Crane. He's going to throw it to Proctor on the curl cut. He takes up there. There's another follow through when the ball hits, the hand hits the backboard and the ball is up there. I'm not for sure what's going on with no call there unless I'm just missing something. Coach Warren wants an explanation. The ball is still above the rim. <clears throat> Even if it comes off the backboard and goes above the rim, it is supposed to be a goal 10. That's two times now. Proctor trying to guard the much taller O'Brien. Good strip, but the ball goes right back to O'Brien, up and in for two, so the game's tied at four. 17 minutes to go here in the first half. Fix and check in for the builders, number 25, Thiessen. Proctor with a deep three, no good. Good job by Crane to pull that board down right among four builders. So Caleb will dribble in, pull back, jump with about 15, good. So the lefty knocks it down and right back to business on the defensive end as he's not letting Clark have the ball. So we see the game plan so far for Tabor. Obviously is not to let Clark even touch the ball. Nice head and shoulders fake there by Jennings. Gets McClure off his feet. So McClure picks up his first. That's his first. Team second. Jarvis Jennings at the line. Shooting two. Checking in from the is number 25, Mason Teacher. So Jennings up and in, so he gets two of them. So two builders now check on the floor. 6-6 six, six here in the early going. Crane now bringing it up for the Blue Jays. Kicks over to Proctor on the far wing. Blue Jays a little screen and roll on the ball. He kicks it out to Voth. He's going to go in. There's a little bit of a height advantage there on Bell. Another pull-up jumper by Crane. Good. So Caleb Crane off to a good start offensively for the Blue Jays. And as I said earlier, we'll see if we, how this is going to work guarding him all night long. Will this wear him out? But so far, he's scored a couple times, and maybe his focus is sharp on both ends. That time Clark did get loose off the screen and we didn't see the pickup that with a switch and picking it up like we had the other couple possessions and he gets his first bucket off the backboard. McClure from both, that's going to be short. And that's going to go out. McClure wearing a sleeve tonight on his knee. Checking in for Southwestern, number one. Number one, Trey Albasolo in for the Builders. So the Builders have had three subs. Blue Jay yet to... Put a reserve in, 15, 15 to go here in opening half. Holcomb Garden Thiessen. Okay, McKinnon has really picked up his defense. Just how he's been playing defense, been using his length a lot better lately. O'Brien with a little shot, no good. Holcomb clears it, throws it over to Crane coming up on the far side. McClure right back to him. We see Cade Hemmert fixing to come in for the Blue Jays. And Crane with a three, so 
Blue Jays a little slow getting back though and gives up the layup to the builder. So 11-10. Near turnover there as Voth was not expecting that pass from Crane. A lot of curl cuts by the Blue Jays. Proctor with a deep three. It's in and out. That ball is halfway down. Good looking shot there by Proctor. Builder swinging the ball around the perimeter now. O'Brien has it. Kicks it down to number two, White, who's checked in the ball game. 6'1 senior from Baxter Springs, Kansas. Thiessen now trying to back Holcomb down. That ball kicked out and then dished back out again. No good. O'Brien with the rebound and the putback, and that one goes. So visiting builders take a 12-11 lead on that putback by Andrew O'Brien. Blue Jays get another sub in as Jaden Miller getting ready to check in for the Blue Jays. So Miller and Hemmer will be coming on the next dead ball. That's what Crane does really well is get to the basket. He's so strong with his upper body and he gets to the rack and it's gonna be two. Crane still all over Clark and the We'll call a block on the Blue Jays as our that's going to be the second on Proctor. So Creed and Avery going to check in as well. So we have Hemmert, Miller, and Avery on for the Blue Jays. Number 15, Justin DiMaria gets his first act of the night. Is yeah, Jake is moving a little bit, but there's also some arm coming out for the builders and there we have uh, O'Brien dished it inbounds to Abasolo. He tried to get it right back to O'Brien. He wasn't quite in bounds yet so turnover on the builders puts it back to the Blue Jays. Ball back to the Blue Jays. 13-12. Tabor one point lead here. A little over 12.50 to go. Holcomb Fell down but kept dribbling as he slipped on something. We see Shuey going to run out there and clean that up for him before they come back down, which is good. Pass over to number 15, Justin DiMaria. And he knocks it down to give the visitors a two-point edge. 15-13, 12 and a half to go here in the third. So Holcomb and Voth remain on the floor for the Blue Jays. So White will pick up his first, his team second, as we see Jennings back on the floor for the Builders and James Oboba coming back on the or onto the floor for the sixth, first time this evening, 6'6 six, six senior out of the United Kingdom. And Creelan Avery going to the basket, look like he's knocked out of bounds, no whistle. And so Creelan, a good hustle by Creelan. He doesn't whine about it, just gets right back down the floor. Jaden Miller to the rack. And Jaden, they list him at six foot. I've not yet asked Warren if, they, if he's being truthful for that or not. But uh, Miller can really get up in the air. A nice dish there by the builder. So Thiessen with the dunk pulls the builders back to two, 17-15. Miller really gets off the floor well. Center 12 to go here in the opening half. We see McClure coming back in. That's Miller's shot. He knocks it down. Pull up jumper off the dribble like that is a lost art, but not for Miller. He Nice job. 17-17, excuse me, I had the, the score backwards men to go. And Creed and Avery, good hands there. Knocking that ball away, but couldn't quite corral it. So Clark and McClure are back on the floor. So we'll see who draws the assignment now on Clark with Caleb Crane on the bench. Looks like it's going to be Creelan Avery. Creelan will give his hand at it. That's one thing we can't do is not pick him up. So Clark comes in right away. And we lose him on a little curl cut there. And he makes the Blue Jays pay for, I believe, his fourth, third and fourth point of the evening. Avery over to Miller on the far side. Miller waiting for the screen from Abova. He'll pull up again. That's going to be a little long. 
Something we haven't seen Jaden do much is shoot that one long, but a little too strong on that possession. Builders working it around, three-pointer up top, no good. But Aboba can't crowl as that ball come off hot. James' arm's not quite up yet. Knocked it out of bounds. Ball remains with Builders. Hidalgo back in. Builders, a lot of cutters into that high post area. And again, no good. Aboba clears the miss by Jennings. He gets it over to Hemmert. Hemmert to Miller now back up to Aboba. Blue Jays going to set it back up. Aboba, a little bit of trouble, kicks it back out to Hibbert. Hemmert. And Kate with a great drive, uses that left hand. That foul is going to be on number 23. Hildago, that's his first. We see the nice move there by Cade, strong move. Great finish with the left hand, so he's gonna go to the line to shoot one. And off the mark, 19-19. Team's knotted up here just about the midway point of the first half. Miller now on Clark. Jennings with the ball up top, and the lefty dribbles in. Fake, fake, and up off the board, and he draws the foul on the Blue Jays. Basket is good for number, for number 11, Travis Jennings. Fellas on Tigers, number 13, James Aboba. So Aboba picks up the foul. Jennings will try to complete the traditional three-point play and does. The builder's up three now, 22-19 just under the midway point of the first half. Tabor going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number nine ranked team in the country. So far doing a good job on Clark. McClure in the corner, that three-pointer just off. Jennings clears for the builders. Ooh. Tabor's defense. They're switching everything up there with Clark. Timeout for the Blue Jays. We'll take it with them, 24-19, builders up five. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even Tabor going to need to get a bucket here to, to stop this little run by Southwestern. Nice fake there by Jaden. Throws it out to McClure. And Thatcher just a little short on a couple tonight. O'Brien drives on Hemmert. Kind of got hammered up in the air and kind of ducked a shoulder into him, but Cade was coming Those down. Eleven, Cade, That's his first. So coach 
Warren's asking. He's like, I know he's up, but then he kind of leaned his shoulder in. Both coming in for Cade as Cade picks up his first fifth team foul on the Blue Jays. O'Brien missed the first one, drops in the second one. Eight point lead for Southwestern. Nice take by Crane. That one's no good. That's out of bounds. It's going to be Blue Jay ball. Should be a reset of the shot clock, I believe. <clears throat> As we do have it. Cat on the clock there was wanting to be sure that it did hit the rim. And as we see there, clearly it did. <clears throat> Both with it. Attack of the rim picks up a foul on Southwestern. It's going to be on number 15, Justin. Justin D. Maria, as I was trying to see who's coming in for the Blue Jays, as both will go to the line and shoot two. And Proctor coming in for Miller. So Jaden, like usual, comes in off the bench, a six foot freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Give the Blue Jays several good minutes right there on both ends of the floor. Both drops in the first one and the second one. So 21, 7, 27. So Tabor much needed two points there. As nice move by Clark as he uh, got Crane leaning a little bit too far on the high side and back door. But Crane picks up the foul. That's his first. Team six, but he's going to make Clark earn it here at the at the free throw line. And that one's good as we see number three Wyatt Bell back in, replacing Di Maria. Bell, six foot sophomore out of Keller, Texas, from Delta State University. Clark looking to add to the. Builder lead, and he does. Back to an eight point lead, just under eight minutes to go. Crane gonna start the offense here for the Blue Jays. A little double screen up top out to McClure. McClure tried to pass over to Holcomb, deflected an out to Proctor. Holcomb thought about that, passed it off. How's that not a foul? He landed on Proctor, no whistle. Excuse me, on both, I mean. Proctor shot off the mark. Hidalgo with the rebound. O'Brien kicks it back out to Bell. Back to O'Brien in the corner. Now he gets up to Jennings. Over to Bell behind the three-point line on the far side. Back to O'Brien. Out to Bell for a corner three. That's going to be good. 11-point lead now for Southwestern. 32-21. Seven minutes left. Here in the opening half, Blue Jays working it around the perimeter. Both trying to take it in over the smaller bell, and he gets it to bounce in. So good job by both recognizing the mismatch and getting him right to the paint for about the eight footer. Hemmert fixing to check back in for the Blue Jays. Be giving somebody a breather here in just a few minutes. Bell kicks it out to Jennings. No, he just fake pulls up, banks it from the free throw line. So the 15 footer, good. So right now, Tabor having a little trouble getting the builders out of their basket. Southwestern doing a nice job of running their stuff and getting the ball up and in. Tabor's making them work for it, but South so far, Southwestern's. Cashing in, Crane now tries to drive and into some trouble there. O'Brien up, up and in, 13 point lead. Blue Jays with another timeout, full timeout. We'll be back in just a minute. 
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to powerlift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Infinity Fit And if you're just joining us while you're listening to some band and watching the cheerleaders throw out some goodies to everybody, uh, today in KCAC Women's Play, Kansas Wesleyan won at Bethel 63-60. The Blue Jays took care of business here at home against the Builders 74-52. McPherson dropped a close one on the road down at Oklahoma Wesleyan 58-55. And Avila got a good win at home against Ottawa 71-64. Bethany goes on the road and knocks off Sterling 68-62. So the Warriors have an a little more difficulty this season, and teams really gearing up for them. St. Mary has picked up a win after losing to Tabor the other day. They picked up the win today at York, 91 to 64, and Franz picked up a road win at Evangel, 79-69. I'll get some guys' scores here in just a minute, and give you a minute, and give you some updates as we see the Blue Jays moving the ball around the perimeter, both out to Proctor. Catch and shoot three again, just in and out. Proctor's had a couple of those that looked really good and right in and out, but Tabor's had to knock some more of those down to stay in this contest. 13 point lead for the Builders, 36 23. The kick over, no good. And Hemmert does what Hemmert does, he keeps it alive. Nice pass by Proctor to Holcomb, but can't quite pull it in and throw it to Crane, so turnover for the Blue Jays. So Tabor had a chance to cut into this 13 point lead and can't corral it. Thiessen on Holcomb inside. Kick out to Abasolo. His shot goes in now. Thiessen now working on Holcomb, 6'10 senior from Inman, Kansas. Started his career in Poria State. Finishes there to give the Builders a 15 point lead. So Tabor's still not out of this. They're still in it, running their stuff. Just had some shots go in and out, and Southwestern had theirs go in. That's pretty much the difference right now in the game. Tabor hasn't had a lot of turnovers, just some missed shot opportunities so far. So another one there. O'Brien kicks it over to Bell. Bell for three. That's going to be off the front iron. Proctor with the rebound. Voth was trying to get it. Couldn't quite get it up. And Caleb once again off the rim for the Blue Jays. And Coach O'Brien for Southwestern telling him to push it. So right back for another three. That one's going to be long. So both grabs the ball and says, hold on, let's settle down. We need to get a bucket. So 3.45 to go. Tabor down 15. We had just a little run there by the builders, and that's been about it, the separation between the two so far. Proctor, nice job going to the basket, fouled by Bell. That'll be Bell's second, 15 foul. We see Miller fixing a check back in for the Blue Jays. Proctor going to shoot two for the Blue Jays. One dribble sets and off the iron. As Miller gives Crane a break. Clark back in for the Builders as well as Di Maria and Hildago. So the Builders playing about eight, nine. Right now, nine deep. The Blue Jays are about eight deep. Now they're nine deep as well. So we got nine on nine basically this evening so far. So Proctor's second one goes in, 14 point lead for the Builders. 
Southwestern working around top, switching sides of the floor. Miller now guarding Clark. That one's off the mark. Good rebound by Holcomb. Let's see if the Blue Jays with 3.14 left here can make a little run. Both trying to back down White. Off the backboard, no good. That ball tipped out just enough. Skipped clear over Clark, now looks for the three. And his drive though is good. So 40 to 34, Blue Jays down 16. Be nice if they could get this down to about 10 or 11 at the break. That'd make them feel pretty good about going into the break as Tabor Looking a little bit disoriented offensively here. Six on the shot clock as Holcomb has it down low. Kicks it out to Miller. He shoots him a shot clock violation. As we see McClure and Jennings coming back in for the Blue Jays and for the Builders. So Tabor being a young team still. The one thing that when they start pressing a little bit, and try to maybe do a little bit too much individually. Not, I don't think out of selfishness at all, just trying to make a play for their team. And that's when it kind of falls apart for us a little bit. See if we can wrap back up and play good as Miller is all over Clark. Di Maria with the bucket. So 18 point lead, as I said, we hopefully get it down to 10 or 11. It goes right up to near 20. So. 24-42. Tabor still fighting and clawing here. Minute 45 left. Must be a foul by Dia Maria. Must be his second. Six team foul. Will be out of bounds. Shot clock goes back to 20. O'Brien will check back onto the floor, giving Dia Maria a break with the two personals. And 142 to go here in the opening half. So that's gonna be a hold on Jennings. So Jennings picks up his first, but more importantly, that's gonna send McClure, a very good free throw shooter to the line with the clock not running. So Coach O'Brien, he's trying to give Jennings an earful more than anything else, asking why, why are we holding? Now he's gonna ask the official if there was a hold. So McClure, Factor just a little bit short with everything tonight. Hopefully he can get that going. We really need his scoring. Again, he's our scoring leader at 15.6 points a game. There he pulls away the miscue by the builders. Tabor now. Holcomb with the three, that's good. And Kenyon Holcomb can knock that shot down. So now it's back to 15. Stopping a bucket here for the Blue Jays would be huge. As we see Avery and Voth getting ready to check back in. Southwestern wants a timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. We'll just keep it here. And uh, see the 30 second timeout. Coach O'Brien drawing something up there. We see the cheerleaders. Cheerleader is doing a good job, and Chris Teichler, Dr. Teichler in the background, he's cheering the cheerleaders on and clapping. Dr. Teichler, one of the good supporters of our athletic program here on our campus. We really appreciate that. So back to action, we'll see what Coach O'Brien has drawn up for this last minute six. Jennings has it up top. Avery is really guarding Clark. Nice job by Holcomb on the back door cut. Altering that shot and then getting the rebound. McClure now, that maybe will get him going with an easy bucket. So 13, we're right here. Jennings trying to back down McClure. And Holcomb with the block shot. Good job by Kenyon with Thatcher's up. Another block. Tabor's got to get back in here. Three blocks in one possession by Kenyon Holcomb. He kicks it up to Miller. 
Now we're going to, well, hold on a minute. We want one shot. So McClure out of action. The other one's guarding the guards out top, and McClure just guarding everybody inside. So three blocks by Kenyon on one possession. Then sprints it up court. Now we're going to try to get something here. Eight seconds going. Five. Step back three by Avery, or student Jaden Miller, good at the buzzer. So Tabor all the way back. Comes down to 10 points as we'll see a replay here of that shot by Miller. Tabor down 18, comes all the way back uh, to 10, which I was hoping we'd get it to here at the half. As we see some blocks here, we're gonna enjoy some defense by Kenyon. There's one. So you see McClure step off as he's hurt. Now it's Kenyon against everybody. There's two as the volleyball spikes it to the ground. And the third one, spin and Kenyon again, and then he pulls it down. A great job. And then, then the, the shot by Miller, as I know we're getting ready to key that replay up as well. So Tabor has got to feel good about being down 18 and then cutting it down to 10. Cutting it down to 10. You know, as a coach, I know a lot of times all we try to do is, is get us to certain areas at certain times on the on the clock, as we see here, a couple of step backs and shoots it over the much taller 6'7 O'Brien. He got seven inches and some change probably on Jaden. But the good good job by Miller to get that ball off. 42-32, builders up, but Tabor right back in the ball game. And we're gonna take a break here at halftime. We'll be back in a little bit. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Sooner or later, you might need some ec And we're back with you as we uh, again thank Dr. Teichler and the Pep Band for their efforts this evening. Just going to run down a few scores. Uh, right now, 15 minutes left in the game. Franz is up at Evangel, 49-46. So a little bit of a surprise there. Franz has lost a couple of their better players for the year. And they're on the road at a tough place to play and up three. They had a little bit earlier start going that far. McPherson travels to Oakwoo, so Oklahoma Wesleyan, and they are also ranked. And they are up. Oklahoma Wesleyan is leading the Bulldogs 32-23 down in Bartlesville. St. Mary's come off the win against us on Saturday, are leading at York 29-24 at halftime. And York at home is usually a lights-out group. You know, they struggle on the road a little bit at times, but play very well at home. So St. Mary 
appears to be maybe finding their groove here a little bit as we're going to wrap up the first round of, of conference play. Ottawa travels to Avila, and right now Ottawa's down with uh, three and a half to go in the first half, 29-26. Bethany with a minute 15 left in the first half is trailing at Sterling, 30 to 32. Of course, our score here, 42-32, Blue Jays down to Southwestern in half. And right now, Bethel can kind of a surprise just because KW has been playing really well. But Kansas Wesleyan is trailing at Bethel 28 to 40 here uh, at, down at North Newton. So we're going to take another break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with some stats. And we can sit here and listen to the band and see how, how Dr. Teichler and those guys are going. Let you enjoy a little bit of our pet man. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. And we're back with a couple of stats from the first half, the scoring. First four of the visiting builders, Andrew O'Brien, or excuse me, let's start with the, the leading scorer, Jarvis Jennings, 11, Kevin Clark, 10, O'Brien, 9, Justin DiMaria, 5, Mason Thiessen, 4, and Wyatt Bell, three. For the Blue Jays, Caleb Crane with nine, Jaden Miller, seven, Jack Voth, six, Patrick McClure, four, Canyon Holcomb, three, Kate Hemmert, two, and Jake Proctor, one. Team-wise, neither team has turned the ball over much at Southwestern only two, and Tabor only four times. Big, big stat differential is the blocks. Tabor guarding the rim well with six blocks to zero for the Builders. The Builders, although, hold the edge on the assist, sharing the ball pretty well. Six assists to Tabor's two. One of the big edges is to in the rebounding, and the Builders have pulled down 24 to Tabor's 10, and the big edge there is seven to two on the offensive end, so Tabor <clears throat> needs to get them off the floor or off the boards a little bit better in this second half. Field goal percent. Builder shot 17 of 36 for 47.2 percent. Tabor 13 of 30 for 43.3 percent. In the three-point line, the Builders are 2 of 9 for 22.2 percent. Tabor just one make, make better. 3 for 9 at 33.3 percent. 
free throw line. A little bit of a difference, not much, but in the percentage wise, Saber is only 50% at three for six. And the builders are 85%, 0.7%, six for seven. So the builders have shot one more, but has made three more from the foul line. Bench points are tied. Both teams thrown in a nine apiece of, from their bench. Seven lead changes. Excuse me, score was tied seven times. The lead changes were four. Most of that, obviously, early on as the Builders did get out to their biggest lead of 18 with 2.01 to go. And Tabor's biggest lead was three with 14.43 to go. So after that 10 point lead, or 18 point lead, with just 2.01 to go, the Blue Jays outscore the Builders by eight over that final stretch to get them back in the game here at 32-22. 4.50 left here in the half. So we're gonna go ahead and send it back up to the studio. So you might catch a little action here on the floor or hear from a few more sponsors. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. And we're back here with about a minute 20, as you can see, left here in the halftime break as we see Coach Warren down trying to get something drawn up. It's going to be Southwestern ball to start the half, so we'll see what Coach O'Brien draws up out of the timeout. I'm sure Tabor has a scouting report on what he likes to draw or what, what Coach O'Brien likes to run out of half times. 
Uh, I know Coach Geiger does a lot of scouting and different things like that for the Blue Jays, and he's spot on uh, a, a lot. You'll hear him oftentimes yell now, inbounds plays, what they're running, and who's going where. And so we'll see if, we're, if we've done a good job of scouting here out of the break as it's going to be Southwestern ball. And it looks like McClure is good to go as we did see him hobble there the last, you know, that last possession where it was Kenyon against the world down there as Thatcher is kind of a little slower coming out, look, favoring that knee a little bit. So I don't know if he tweaked it. But nonetheless, it looks like both starting lineups uh, here in the second half as they were in the game as Clark now has the ball the same way it was with Crane guarding him. So a little weave around the top with O'Brien up on the very top. And Clark, that back door has really worked for Southwestern. I believe Clark scored on that every time except for the one time where he had to shoot a clear up over Holcomb and missed it. There it looks to me immediately like Coach O'Brien is going to try to get Clark some touches. Mismatch now. Proctor for the three. And Jake just a little off. Ball looks good coming off his hand. That one missed a little more than the other two did. But now all of a sudden it's back up to a 14-point lead. As the Blue Jays had worked so hard to get that back down to 10. And now Southwestern out of the gates. And Holcomb, the little right-handed hook doesn't go. <clears throat> More of a scoop shot, I guess, doesn't go. So Tabor really needs to get a stop here as they, they can't keep falling behind so many and then have to fight all their way back every time. And that's going to go the other direction as we have the first foul of the half on. Jennings, that's his second first team foul on the builders. As Jennings asking what it was, the official explains it. He says okay and they move on. So good piece of officiating there and just trying to keep their team from Hildago. He kicks out to Jennings. And right at the shot clock, it says one, the bucket goes. So right out of the halftime, looks like Coach O'Brien got the tension of his team. And it went from a 10 to a 16 point lead in just two and a half minutes. They were working the ball around. McClure driving baseline. Out to Crane for three, that's on the way, off the mark. And Holcomb battles for the rebound, but Hildago tips over to O'Brien. O'Brien controls now as he's called for a foul is Caleb Crane. That's, these officials do a really good job overall, but that seemed pretty touchy up front. So that's Crane's second. Team first of the half as the official kind of got on O'Brien a little bit there. Couldn't see exactly what that was all about. Teeth the end of the game. Swings over to Jennings to Clark. Now Clark for three. And that one's good. That's what he can do. Now it's back up to a 16, 19 point lead. Timeout Blue Jays will take it with them back in a minute. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. 
Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. And back with you here at Tabor College here in Hillsboro. As the Blue Jays, like I mentioned, fought really hard to get that lead back down to manageable at 10. Ideal thing then is to chip it away and maybe get it to five or six with five minutes past in the half and keep working your way down. It's gone the other way for the Blue Jays. As Southwestern right now is showing why they're the number nine ranked team in the country. So McClure going to go, and he was going to flush that one, but a foul on Jennings. That's his third, as we see Trey Abasolo checking back in. Nice quick move by Thatcher was going to the basket. And uh, foul by Jennings first. Blue Jays moving the ball around the top pretty well. Both now swings over to Crane. Deep three by Voth, gonna be a little short. He definitely has that range. But Jack shot just off the front rim. Ball goes into Thiessen. Back door by O'Brien. And he finishes around the rim. Hemmert set the check back in for the Blue Jays. 16-10. The largest lead now for the Builders at 21. So Tabor definitely had the attention of Southwestern as we see Thiessen a little too much leaning into Holcomb. Got his weight going a little bit, couldn't stop. So Holcomb, as you see Thiessen closing out and just bumped Kenyon enough. So Holcomb, good free throw shooter, going to go to the line. See if we can't pull three closer with no time off the clock. And as I say that, he goes off the front rim. Kenyon short on two of them. Hemmert checking in now for McClure. As McClure kind of get a breather. He'll probably go to the end of the bench and grab his two cups of water, as I notice he does all the time when he comes out. Holcomb that time, a little more arch, and knocks it down. So he gets one out of three. Ten point or 20-point lead for the Builders. As that inside, when Holcomb has to come over and help, and they're dishing around him, we need to get some help off that backside. Back to a 22 point lead. Travel by Voth as he got stuck there right above the block. So after a really a pretty clean first half by both teams, a total of six turnovers, two by Southwestern, four by Tabor. Tabor, I think, has four already this half. So O'Brien and Proctor battling each other. Good job by Proctor to keep him out of the lane. O'Brien, nice pass into Bell. So right now, everything working for the Builders and against the Blue Jays, so. Shot by Holcomb, short. Thiessen clears the board for Southwestern. Bell brings up, he kicks it back to O'Brien behind the drip back dribble and pass to Thiessen. Now pull up jumper by Absol Abasolo, no good. Hemmert with the three, so Hemmert adds some life to the Blue Jays, throws in a three pointer. So 36-57 right now, 21 point lead for the visitors from Winfield. Clark no good as Crane got his hand up just in time. 
And Clark off the mark there. Both is going into the basket. Pull up jumper. That's good. So Tabor now with five in a row. That's what it's going to take. Five or six in a row. Maybe you give up a bucket. You get another five or six. And down to 19. As Coach Geiger calling out what they're running. As McClure sets the check back in for the Blue Jays. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That, wow, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, except for that was not a foul. The official is actually blocked out, kind of looking straight on, and he's trying to convince everybody in the gym that we got him on the arm. And Again, like I said earlier, these guys do a great job, and then they'll miss one once in a while, not many, but that one definitely missed. O'Brien, one of two, the Blue Jays fall asleep there on the rebound. Builders pull it back. And that one no good as Proctor got just enough of that, I think, to bother O'Brien. Hemmer with a nice jump stop, kicks out to McClure for three. Off the mark, O'Brien clears and brings it up for the Builders. Southwestern spreading the floor, running to the other end. The three-pointer no good. And that's out of bounds on the Blue Jays. O'Brien, a lot of energy there for the Builders on that possession, both ends. And the ball goes out of bounds off Tabor. 20-point lead for the Builders, 58-38. Ball inbounded to number two, Trey White. Now both draws the responsibility of guarding Clark. So we'll see if Jack can use his length a little bit on him. As Clark goes to the basket, no help. And it goes up off the board, 22 point lead for <laughs> Southwestern. Proctor pulls up. Jake just can't quite find the mark. He's got some nice looks. He'll usually typically knock a lot of those down. So hopefully he'll keep shooting. That ball's going to be out of bounds off of, let's say that was off of Tabor. The official about pointed to Southwestern. A little collision there. Probably no foul by either team. Both going after the ball. Just some incidental contact there. Definitely off of the Blue Jays. And Southwestern keying it in in front of their bench. Miller now draws the assignment on Clark. Spin move, shoots it up over McClure. That's going to go the other way as Miller trying to <laughs> grab the rebound of the much larger Hildago. He uh, picks up his second as we see Teeson trekking back in, replacing Hildago. Blue Jays not quitting, so got a lot of fight in them here. Just have not been able to get shots to fall here in the second half. And Southwestern has, and that's pretty much just the difference. I know that sounds obvious, but Miller goes in, pull up jumper good. A lot of times in basketball, you uh, have a lot of turnovers or you know things like that that cause you not to score, but Tabor getting some good shots. Um, just can't get the ball to drop consistently. Creed and Avery, nice job bothering the shot attempt there by Abasolo. And Avery turns and throws it to our bench. I'm not sure if he thought somebody was coming up or something out of the corner of his eye. Thought somebody was there, but he threw it out of bounds. 
Builders maintaining that 20-point lead. It's been out here for a while. The teams have changed a few buckets. And there's a 22-point lead as Solo drops it in. Crane going to check in for the Blue Jays. The next dead ball is Avery gets it over to Miller to McClure to Holcomb up top, swinging it over this side. Now Hemmer kicks it down to Avery. Nice bounce pass to the Holcomb. Holcomb trying to figure out a way to go, and that's going to be another foul on Thiessen, or his first foul, I believe, on Thiessen. That would be his second, actually, as we see Holcomb trying to go around him on the replay there. A little body foul. Avery kicks it out to Crane. Crane gonna be block, blocking foul on Obsolo. Obsolo. Crane gonna kick it in for the Blue Jays under their bucket. Gets it to Hemmert. And the foul there by number two, Trey White. So the foul starting to mount up on Southwestern. Seventh team foul. But Hemmert on the, will go the line shooting two as he's in active shooting. Shooting two. First one good. Forty-one sixty-two. That's one to go for Hemmert, and he's short, but it does roll in. Gets the shooter's roll. If you watch Cade play a lot, shot just a little. Could use a touch more arch on those free throws, but he's got it to where it's going to drop in. So Crane trying to guard O'Brien down low, and now we're going to have a foul on Cade up. That's his third, third team foul on the Blue Jays. Left handed hook by Thiessen, up and good. It's a little five footer. Puts the builders back up. 22, Avery now kicks it over to Crane. Coming off that high screen. Avery up top, fakes the three. He's gonna drive to the bucket. Throws up the right hander, no good. Tries to battle the board, cleared away by Albasolo, and that's going to be out of bounds off of Miller. So the ball will stay with the builders. Twenty-six on the shot clock, just under ten minutes to go here in the game. Tough shot by Albasolo, and that's good. Coach O'Brien wanted a foul there. He's wanting the foul, and, he's, and the official's saying he leaned back into the Blue Jay. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a minute. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems.
Back with you out of the Builder timeout. 14, 24 point lead. Southwestern down, are only up 10 at the half. If you just joined us, it was 18 point lead for Southwestern. Tabor cut it back to 10. The Southwestern come right out of the break and have really done a nice job this half to the dismay of all of us Blue Jay fans, 68-42. Crane with a nice drive to the basket. And something with Crane, he goes to the basket. I don't know if he landed on a hip or didn't really see any contact on that play. I think Caleb just got to the basket pretty quick. And looks like he may land on a hip or something and official stopped it right away. It looks like Crane's okay, so McClure back on for the Blue Jays, replacing Hemmert. Good job by Avery, or excuse me, Miller. In there amongst the trees, couldn't see who it was, but Miller, that time dropping down, as we said earlier, the builders have had some luck getting kind of down the lane and then dumping it over to the other post player. That time Miller collapsed and kept that from happening. So. Crane, Crane got to the basket, couldn't finish that. And Clark can't finish either, but the dunk by Thiessen finishes that, puts the, the builders up 26. 8.24 to go. Crane over to Miller. Let's see if the Blue Jays can do something these last eight plus just to get something to build on for the next game. As McClure are battling there. Puts it up and off the backboard and good. Three point attempt by White off the mark, cleared by Miller. Miller going to the basket, goes in and misses that one, knocks it out of bounds. Gonna go over to the builders at Miller's does not miss many of those. That one came off the backboard in the rim and over to the builders. Proctor back in giving Crane a break. So now Miller will chase Clark around the floor. Southwestern brings the ball up. Coach O'Brien calls what he wants and we'll see what happens here. One four low high screen now by Thiessen. So Bell off gets it over to Clark. Clark with the bucket and the foul by Miller. That'd be Miller's first, fourth team foul. So Clark will go to the line to shoot one. First foul on Miller. Again, everything Southwestern is doing is working and Tabor just can't get on track here in the second half. High off the backboard is Miller, or excuse me, Miller, or <laughs> McClure. High off the backboard, it's a nice drive by Thatcher. So Philip Smith, number four, into the game for the Builders. He'll get a three-pointer right in front of their bench, and that's good. So even the guys just coming off the bench are starting to knock down shots. Miller up top, no good. Punched out by Holcomb. Balls will go over to Southwestern. 
75-48. Southwestern here on top of the Blue Jays. Six and a half to go here in the game. The ball's going to be out of bounds. Good hustle there by Smith. That's going to go out of bounds. He couldn't save it on the far side. Both into Miller. So, so far, Tabor's three-point shooting has just not gotten on track. And I say that both launches one looks good, but a little long. Tabor still struggling from the three-point line. They, they usually knock down quite a few of those and just not falling for the Blue Jays this evening. Jenny's trying to back down Miller. He can back him down, but he's not going to quit. That's going to be an offensive foul. Nope, going to call on the floor. He's got to hold first. So Miller... You see him. I think that definitely should have been an offensive foul. I just, I, know I had a talk with an official the other night after the game about that. How can you can back a guy down and back him down and back him down, but yet you can't push an offensive guy off the block? And that's just the way the game is. It's not anything against these three officials tonight. I pointed that out the last game. Is this? Offensive guy can knock the defender clear down around the bucket, and there's never a foul called. That time Miller goes all the way back after taking one of the chest, and it's still a foul on the defender. So, and it happens both ways, not just you know against the Blue Jays. That's the first foul on number four, Philip Smith's eighth team foul. Both will be the line to shoot two. For Tabor. Both makes both. So fifty seventy five. Five and change to go here in this contest. Number nine, nationally ranked number nine, Southwestern, leading the Blue Jays by a quarter here, 20 to 25 points. Holcomb with another block. So nice take by Hammer to the basket. Foul's going to be on number zero, Brian, as he. Commits a foul and knocks uh, Hemmer down, then helps him up. So good sportsmanship there by the builders. Nice take by Hemmert. Nice aggressive move to the basket. Earns two free throws. A little strong on the first one. So. Bell and Thiessen both check back in, giving O'Brien and Hildago a break. Emmerich gets one more. So Cade gets one of two. 75-51, builders on top, just under five to play. A couple of other scores around the conference on the men's side. At Southwest, or excuse me, Evangel after trailing late to Franz comes out on top by 13, 88, 75. As that one did get over. They did start a little bit earlier down in Springfield. Oklahoma Wesleyan on top. At home against McPherson, 51-44. It was a little over seven to go. St. Mary up a, extended their league now as we see Crane drop another one in. 
59-43, St. Mary over York, 7-23 and 23 to go in that one. Ottawa on top at Avila with 11 and a half to go, 47-35. Bethany down with 10 to go at Sterling, 60-51. to 51. And Bethel up 13 with just under nine minutes to go on Kansas Wesleyan, 60-47. to 47. So there's a roundup for you with the KCAC scores. Good hustle by Proctor. As Thiessen going after the ball there, lands on him incidentally. And Proctor with a nice drive, so Jake has been in and out on some open shots from the perimeter, and that time he goes to the rack to the 6'10 kid, Thiessen. And nice finish there by Proctor. And Thiessen picks up the foul, so we'll get the and one here by Jake. That one good, so Proctor was walking to the bench. He, he knew he was coming out, and Miller didn't stand up, so the timer forgot he was sitting down there in front of the bench. You can't see if those guys sit down sometimes, so three and a half to go. 21-point lead for Southwestern. As Coach O'Brien's wanting to work some of that shot clock, they don't need any more points. Obviously, they're going to have to shoot it. The shot clock will go out. Gives them an opportunity to try to run some stuff. And Tabor trying to defend. And the bucket in there by Justin DeMaria. So, Blue Jays. Crane kicks it out. Taken away by Smith. And he goes into the bucket. Avery fixes a check in for the Blue Jays. That kicks out the vote to Kenyon Holcomb. Three-pointer on the way, no good. And Tabor getting ready to put in some more subs here. Aboba fixing a check-in for the Blue Jays, as is number 21, Zach Hebert, 6'1", sophomore, Bakersfield, California. Miller all the way to the basket. Tabor just can't find the mark tonight. That's kind of been the story the whole second half and for a decent stretch of first half. Uh, Tabor did get on fire there those last two minutes the first half, but haven't found the groove here in the second half. And you can't do that against a team like Southwestern or you're going to be in trouble. It's another three-pointer, Trey White goes in for the Builders. This one a sub timeout, so Avery, Aboba, and Hebert in. And for the Builders, number 10, Damari Gatewood, and number 12, Donovan Kenny. Kenny, a sophomore out of Arlington, and Gatewood, a senior out of McCordsville, Indiana. So let some of the bench play this out. Hebert looks over to Aboba. Blue Jays swinging around as Avery now looks up top. He gets over to Miller. Ten to shoot. Nice take to the basket by Miller. And he's fouled. So an and one opportunity. Foul on number 15. Di Maria, that's his third. Leon Sissamute ready to check in for the Blue Jays as well. Leon's a 6'3 senior out of Manchester, UK, and he'll replace Simmert. So Miller looking to drop in point number 12 if he can get this free throw to go. So a nice game for Miller. And he does, so Jaden scores his 10, 11, and 12th point on that three-point play. Ebert now guarding out front as he's got Kenny as his assignment defensively. Avery now guarding Gatewood. So the 
kick out to so the three-pointer no good saved by Thiessen under a minute to go now 84-59 Got a foul out top. Uh, down below on the pass. Sissomi with the foul. That's going to be his first. And we see Creighton Kukula going to check in for the Blue Jays. Creighton 6'4", freshman out of Elbing, Kansas from Brian Academy. I'll tell you, Creighton is long and athletic. He has done a really nice job on the reserve team. Earned his way up to the varsity squad and has scored some. Got in, done a nice job. His parents across the way there at midcourt. Off the board, no good, and James Zaboba pulls down the rebound. He's going to kick it over to the lefty, Kukula, back out to Avery. He's going to send in a deep three, no good. Sissomi keeps it alive for the Blue Jays, but taps it out. And Southwestern crowds that they will not take another shot. They're going to come away with the 84-59 victory. So, we'll dribble this one out, and that's going to do it. 84-59, 84-59, the 9th ranked team in the country comes in. Tabor plays them close for a half after getting down again by 18. Tabor showed a lot of heart coming back that end of that first half, cutting that lead to 10, which is what we wanted. But the second half, uh, Southwestern come out and showed you why they are ranked where they are. They got a really veteran team. A coach who's been around a long time. And uh, the Blue Jays still finding their way as they've, they've gone through a really nice stretch. Now we've lost two in a row here, and Saturday will not get any easier. So if you're joining us, Saturday will be a 4 o'clock start for the men, 2 o'clock for the women um, because we're playing Evangel. So they'll have a long trip and come in Friday. And... Uh, Stay at the hotel and then come over for a game on Saturday. So, again, Saturday will be a big game for both teams, uh, the men and the women, as Evangel, last time uh, we defeated them on the women's side, up in overtime at Evangel. And uh, the men got us pretty good, but they are not playing quite as well right now. And even though we suffered a loss tonight, we're playing much better than we were earlier in the year. So no time to sit back and sulk about anything. We're going to have to just st step it up on Saturday when the Evangel squad comes to town. So once again, 84-59. Tabor up on the short end tonight. A good effort. I just couldn't get shots to fall and, and had a few too many turnovers there in the second half. But uh, still a lot of upside for this young squad. And we'll wish him the best of luck on Saturday. Thanks for joining us. See you next week, or on Saturday. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off at Fenton.